Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant, and today I want to talk about virtual reality, in particular how it relates to Elite Dangerous. Now, I'm by no means an expert on VR, but I have had about two years worth of experience with it. Right now seems to be a good time to talk about it. With both the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift due for release very, very soon, the Raid Award, of course, for pre-order now, the HTC Vive is quite a bit more expensive than the Oculus Rift, but it could be said that technically you're getting a bit more with the Vive. Now, how do they relate to Elite Dangerous? Well, back at EGX in 2015, I was fortunate enough to try out the HTC Vive, both with Elite Dangerous and on the HTC Experience. I've also got an Oculus Rift DK2 here at home, which I use a heck of a lot. Unfortunately, I haven't had any chance yet to try out the Oculus Rift, but from what I can tell, the Oculus Rift and the Vive should be very similar in terms of overall specs. Now, for those of you that haven't tried VR, it's a thing that is very difficult to convey just with the words and images. This is something you've probably heard before, but it's very, very true. But one thing we certainly should get out of the way is that it's nothing like the VR from the 90s and it certainly shouldn't be compared to having monitors or something like that strapped to your head and indeed it's not even remotely close to head tracking or indeed 3D TVs. It really is very much its own experience and it's pretty much a new form of media. I'm going to do a small analogy here despite the fact that they invariably get pulled apart by people but just think that when TVs first come along, they often did stage and theoretical shows on it. Because TV was simply seen as an extension of the theatre back then. But ultimately, they're very, very different things. And the same is true for virtual reality. It's a new media, it's a new way to experience things. Now, I don't really want to get into pricing in this video. I may touch on it briefly at the end, but really, this is just about VR at the moment. Before I get into specifics then, I just want to talk briefly about what that experience is actually like. Now, we all have different thresholds towards our suspension of disbelief, and to some extent that would have an impact with uh, your overall experience on VR, but both HTC and Oculus have gone to great extents to make sure that that is minimal as possible. So, what is it like when you put on one of those VR headsets? Well, with the Vive, it is very much like being transported to another world, something you've probably heard again, and no doubt over the coming months that phrase is going to become a bit of a cliche, but it's very true. And of course it's very dependent on the abilities and capabilities of the developers of the VR experience in question, and that's where Elite really does come into it and really does shine. Regardless of what can be said about Elite Dangerous and its gameplay, its experience as a virtual reality game really is pretty much unrivaled at the moment. The sense of scale and the sense of depth are the two things that really do hit you the most when you first jump into VR in Elite Dangerous. The first thing you notice is that your ship has a real cockpit. If you're used to playing Elite Dangerous on a monitor, your cockpit or your heads up display will all look very, very flat. But inside virtual reality, it's a completely different story. You're no longer looking at your cockpit on a screen, but you're actually sitting inside the cockpit. The entirety of the bridges have been fully realized within the game, so that allows you to sit in the seat and look around the bridge. Initially, this can be something that is very, very strange, because it's that size, that sense of space, that gives the VR sense of presence. Now, presence is the sensation that you're actually in that virtual environment. And this is perhaps the most difficult part of VR to actually explain to other people. If the sense of presence is actually correctly achieved, then you will literally feel as though you are in that ship's seat. And Elite achieves this very, very well, especially with the HTC Vive. Like I said, I haven't tried the Oculus Rift, but I have tried the DK2. And for anyone who has tried the DK2, but not the HTC Vive, I can tell you that the Vive is leaps and bounds ahead of the DK2. The other thing you really notice is the sense of depth. And this even extends to the UI. On the screen, the UI looks all flat. It all looks as though it exists in one plane of space. But in reality, this couldn't be further from the truth. As you're looking forward, you'll realize that each element of UI exists at a different distance from you. For example, the top left comms panel and the top right information panel are much closer to you than the radar HUD, which is a lot further away. And can actually get a sensation of that in the video clip I'm showing here. Uh, the VR actually allows you to stand up out of your seat and walk around the bridge. You have a limited capacity to do this with the Oculus Rift DK2. It limited us to because of the length of the cables. With the HTC Vive, you can actually walk around the entirety of the bridges. 
But as I stand up, you can see how the separate elements of the UI all move independently of each other, and I can actually look around some of them and even move behind them. This sense of depth also extends to everything external to the ship. Particularly if you're in the larger ships like the Anaconda, it really does feel like being on one of the big ocean tankers. You stand in the bridge looking out at the prow of your ship. The Eagle and the Viper, conversely, feel much more like being in a fighter plane. Outside your ship, the size of the interior of the station feels truly immense. As you sit there on your docking pad and look up, you can see the other docking pads what feels like miles above you. The first time I saw this, the strangeness of gravity really did strike me. Looking up at the ships way above me, as they passed over with their roofs facing down towards me, only to realise that, to them, I was actually upwards. And it's experiences like this that VR is going to be able to convey unlike any other medium out there. A great example of this is trying to play Portal 2 in VR. It can get strange enough when on a monitor, but when you open up a portal on the wall and then a portal on the floor and have a look through one portal only to see yourself standing there in a slightly different orientation, it seems slightly more than bizarre. And then there's those VR experiences of going into dreamscapes or even going into those cell shaded games and feeling like you're in a cartoon world. VR is about very much more than just extending our ability to experience gameplay. It transports us literally into other worlds and the applications for this are pretty much endless. But getting back to Elite Dangerous, as you leave these stations and if you turn to face them, you'll finally be aware that these stations, even the Coriolis ones, are absolutely massive. This is something that isn't really apparent on your monitor, but as you sit there at the docking hatch and look upwards at the station towering above you, it really does hit home just how large these things are. And of course, taking the sense of scale to a whole new level are planets. Now strangely, due to the way our perception works, the sense of perspective and scale of planets doesn't immediately become apparent until you're down near the surface of them. Whilst they do seem vast from space, the only way to truly appreciate their size from space is when there's something nearby to give you a sense of perspective, even if this is only the ship of a wing member, or even a small outpost. With something nearby to give you a sense of scale and a sense of perspective, the size and distances of planets really do strike home. But when you get down to a planetary surface, and when you sit there on the top of a 10 kilometer mountain and look out to the horizons, then you really do get to appreciate just what VR can deliver. In this case, entire worlds. And when you're down there on these worlds, you realize that each world, each area is far from being the same as anywhere else. Every planet, every area, every mountain all have their unique features and their unique areas. This is something that's no doubt going to be highlighted to a great extent with the arrival of VR. While some games out there look absolutely great when on a monitor, when you actually go inside of those games in VR, it's a very different story. Quite often, if a game hasn't been built from the ground up with VR in mind, it will suffer from a number of problems. Things such as scale can become quite an issue. I remember trying Half-Life 2 in VR back when it was first enabled, and, well, the scale, that was a good experience, the scale of things really did leave a lot to be desired. For example, things like the vending machines in rooms would only be waist or chest height. In other games, I've walked up to vehicles such as cars and found their tyres to be head height. Things such as sense of depth can also be a problem. On the monitor, you can have a skybox in the distance, and this can really convey a sense of depth. But when in VR, if you're in the exact same game, you may find that you can distinctly see where the skybox begins and ends. So as VR becomes more widely adopted by a big audience, it's going to become increasingly important for developers to focus very tightly on the sorts of environments they're creating with their games and their demos. And for games that are in the open world genre, we could find that developers have an increasing reliance on procedural generation. And I really feel that the richness of an environment just cannot be understated when you're discussing VR. Now, I do think that for a while at least, at least in the initial wave of games, that gameplay may well take a back seat to the richness of an environment. The environment is probably going to be a very important factor when it comes to uh, experiencing VR. And you actually see this quite a bit already. Anyone who has a VR headset and plays Elite Dangerous regularly will talk about the game in a very different way to people who don't have access to VR. 
over the coming weeks I'm going to release some additional videos on virtual reality and just discuss some very focused areas of it. Virtual reality is something I'm very excited about and I really am looking forward to see just how the general public react to it when it starts becoming just a little bit more mainstream than it currently is. I did say at the beginning of the video that I didn't want to get too much into pricing and that I might discuss it a little bit at the end. So here we are, I'm going to do that right now. There are a lot of comments out there uh, mentioning just how expensive VR actually is. And that's something that I can't argue against. VR is indeed very expensive. And even with my keen interest in it, it makes me think twice to spend that amount of money. But it's certainly no more expensive than a decent quality TV. And whilst there may be the argument that a TV could get a lot more use, my argument to that would be that VR transports you into a very different world. Now, I use TV as a comparison in pricing terms because one, it's in a similar sort of price range, and two, it's a medium that people use regularly and are quite willing to stump up a lot of cash for it. And I really think that given enough time, and I'm talking five to perhaps ten years here, that VR is going to become a very mainstream product. That may seem a little bit of a crazy idea, but then again, 20 years ago, the idea of everyone carrying around little portable smartphones, which were essentially very powerful computers by the standards in those days, that too would have seemed very crazy. And so too would the idea of people paying upwards of £700 to have that privilege. The industry as well is very much pushing for VR. It seems to be something that a lot of people want to actually happen. And just recently, AMD in an interview were talking about pushing for a resolution of 16K per eye at 144Hz. And that they have a roadmap in place right now that will make the technology available to deliver that sort of experience. I'm personally of the opinion that over the past five or six years or so, that the development of game worlds has become a very stagnant. That's not to say that there's not a lot of work put into those game worlds, because there clearly is. And they really do have an increasing wealth factor all the time now, with some great graphics and some lot of extra effects. But overall, in terms of the worlds that they deliver, they're not a whole lot different to the likes of Skyrim or other such games delivered from that time period. But the advent of VR is going to change that a heck of a lot. Firstly, because as I've talked about already, the uh, players are going to be actually inside the game world. And experiencing the environment from first hand is a very different thing to experiencing the environment from on the monitor. And the other thing, of course, is that the technology to drive VR requires some very, very powerful computers. And for quite a long time now, the stagnation in the development of computer games has kind of hindered the uh, development of that sort of technology. But the VR really is probably going to push both the CPU and GPU. GPU requirements right up to a whole new level. So I really do look forward to seeing where that's all going and I'm going to be doing some quite extensive coverage over that on the coming weeks. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys and girls next time. Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome to Exploring Elite Dangerous episode 42. I'm slowly making my way back across the galaxy to the solar system and home. This ship has been out here in deep space since April last year, so it's coming up for a year now. I've seen a tremendous amount of sights out here and collected a lot of scan data and although I don't expect to make a significant amount of money here due to the fact that I don't scan every single planet, hopefully it should be a nice chunk. But being out here is far from being just about the money. 